We are live, Chris. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. I just want to say uh, welcome and thank you for joining us today. Uh, we're going to go on another adventure with Cindy. And, um, you know, the way we kind of orient this is we just show up and whatever guidance comes down through Cindy as far as what we're going to explore, what topic, what lesson, um, I trust that guidance. You know, I really look at my job uh, here uh, for those who haven't really been in touch with with me and the way I show up in uh, the Course in Miracles. And I look at myself very much as an advocate, as a student. You know, for me, it's such a tremendous gift to receive the wisdom that channels through Cindy. And of course, the channel through myself as well, because we're all teachers of A Course in Miracles just by showing up, just by studying the church, just by being a part of this community. And yet, for me, the, the real gift is that I get to show up and be in the present moment and see what unfolds and share that. So I see myself very much as an advocate for A Course in Miracles. Um, and that's why I lean on people like Cindy and other teachers to actually teach me because I'm here, I'm teachable, I'm coachable. And uh, I just feel so blessed to be able to share wonderful people uh, with you. And in the future, we're going to be having other teachers as well come on board. And that's going to be exciting as well. I'm looking forward to it. So Cindy, um, I'm going to pass it over to you for an opening prayer, which I've truly come to love as well as uh, introduction to the lesson we'll be exploring today and kind of where we're going. Yes, and um, hi everybody. And if you've been watching us, I'm just, I'm starting by saying a prayer of joining with you and with Chris and with our holiness and with the world wide web because Zoom's already gone down twice and we haven't even gone live. And if you were around last week, you know that the energy of these calls um, knocked me out um, two or three times. So um, I look at it all as a gift. I think everything is a gift and an opportunity for us to blow holes in the dream. And I think we're doing a little bit of that now. But if everybody wants to just take a breath and... Uh, step back, step back from the chattering mind, step back from any expectations. And we are just inviting the one mind, the holiness to step forward. Our goal uh, for however long we share today is nothing short of uh, awakening, nothing short of uh, blowing holes in uh, any kind of chaotic dream, any kind of unhappy dream, actually blowing holes even in the happy dream. Ultimately, as a course student, we recognize our only goal really is to accept the truth of who we are and in that acceptance, recognizing that we are all one. And so um, I let go of thinking I know anything and am as excited and curious as all of you and as Chris to see what's about to unfold. Thank you for that, Cindy. That was uh, grounding. I kind of put my hand on my heart, sort of slowed down. Uh, it's nice. I've been running all morning and your prayer always seems to just kind of ground me and bringing me back uh, to myself. So I do want to mention before we get started also, um, you know, Cindy, you're with the Teachers of God Foundation with Lisa Natoli and Bill Free. And um, they actually sponsor, you know, A Course in Miracles lessons that we share and help make this work available to people in over 150 countries. So if you like what we're doing and you want to go deeper with transformation, uh, just click, click the link in this post to the 40 day for transformation. Um, it's free. And so many people have really experienced profound transformations in just 40 days. So click the link, check it out. Um, join us on this journey. And one of the teachers that, you know, we are going to have in the future is Lisa Natoli. So um, you'll get to hear from kind of her directly what that experience is like. 
Uh, for now, though, um, let's see where we're going to go, Cindy, with the lesson we're exploring. So I didn't know what we were going to do when I sat. I think it was yesterday or yeah. maybe Tuesday. And I, I practice this more and more, this idea that whenever I think I'm a separate body, then I'm really not in my right mind. Mm -hmm. And when I'm in the right mind, which means I am already connected with the all that is already awakened, then all answers are provided. And so I uh, sat in willingness that that holiness come through. And from there asked what it is we should talk about today. And from there, I was guided to get uh, the purple book, <laughs> the purple book. <laughs> yeah. And I immediately opened it to page 1196, which is lesson 132. I lose the world from all I thought it was. And what is um, so cool is, okay, so in 2018, I made the decision. I read every word in the blue book. I didn't own the purple book then. I did, I did, which meant I showed up and mostly followed the directions. Every workbook lesson, I did the four and, and the teacher's manual and the Psalm of Prayer. And, you know, I read all the words in 2018. I did the 40 day, I joined living in purpose, I committed. And yet what I'm discovering now <laughs> is that every time, when you get to the end of A Course in Miracles, this is so cool and a lot of course students don't, they seem to override this place. Jesus teaches us that uh, doing the course once is mandatory. It's a, it's a mandatory course only, our, only the timing is voluntary, right? But when then you get to the end, Jesus warns us, <laughs> though a lot of people don't hear it, that the curriculum is then individualized. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and, so and what that means is pretty profound. <laughs> it really means that if you go ahead and spend the next five years, 10 years, 20 years as a core student thinking that all of the truth is in the books, then you've missed the point. You know, you still have learned it and there's brilliance in the stuff, but you don't actually awaken <laughs> until you recognize that the truth is here and in yeah. our joining and that we don't need the book to get there. Yeah. Though the book is a great tool to point us there. <laughs> Does that make sense? So I, I did the lessons once, I read the book once, and now I'm in this fun space where I can sit and say, okay, Jesus, what do you want me to know today? Or what do you want to flow through me today? And sometimes I'm led to this book, sometimes I'm led to a story, sometimes I'm led to another teacher or trainer, and it's all good, right? Yeah. Sometimes I just know. So <laughs> this this weekend, I opened up to lesson 132. I've read it like 10 times since then. And I love that we're teach that we're doing this, Chris. I love that yeah. you've given me this opportunity. And I could tell you point blank, um, this lesson was for me. <laughs> it always <laughs> is, right? It always is, yeah. Because I'm the only one that exists because yeah. there's only one mind. But I ever I've read this maybe six or seven times. I've done the exercise. And every time I read it and every time I sit, it changes. Well, of course it does, because there's, you know, the line in this lesson, when you said we'd be talking about it, there's one line that just stuck out to me, which is the present now remains the only time here in the present is the world set free. For as you let the past be lifted and release the future from your ancient fears, you find escape and give it to the world, you know, and it's like every time we do any lesson, whether it's A Course in Miracles, another path we're walking, even um, something, you know, math, science, any, any time we do something, if we're stuck in the past and the ideas of how it should be, how it was, what we know about it, then we lose the opportunity in this present moment to be teachable, to, to be taught by the wisdom of the teaching. You know, that's one of the things I love about the way you and I show up and play together is 
we don't have a set of questions that we're going to sit down and say, well, here's what we need to answer. We don't have a set of, of real specific topics. We know the lesson we're going to play with, but we're not trying to find an answer. And I think that's a big distinguishment in um, spiritual paths and the way we approach our spiritual path is if we set out to find a specific answer, we're missing the actual most important part of the teaching of freedom, which is to be here right now. And so, you know, as you're saying, you've taken the lesson 10 times and it's come up different for you every time. My first thought is, of course it has, because when we're in the moment, that's exactly what a teaching does. That's why it's individualized, not just to the person, but to the moment. And freedom lies in letting go of everything but this moment. Yeah. Freedom lies in being able to, and I just got inspired, you know, Chris, we're going to talk for a few minutes and then not for the 15 minutes suggested because <laughs> that's too much silence with a thousand people or whoever's watching this, or maybe it's not, but um, I'm going to read the suggestion and we'll move into a stillness exercise for just a minute or two. Yeah. The thing about this lesson that's been blowing my mind, and I think it's going to become my mantra for a while, at least that's been mm -hmm. my internal space, is how many of the other lessons can be found in just these pages. Like, I think if I sit with it long enough, I might find all of the other lessons. Um, it very specifically states, and even in the prayer, I am as God created me. That's lesson 94. That's lesson but 94, 110, 162. And then, you know, there are others in part two that speak to this. Let us remember I am as God created me. And now I am as God created me. So there's at least five lessons that specifically state that we are already here as God created us. Yeah. This lesson speaks to us and says very specifically that the past is over, <laughs> you yep. know, and, and how many lessons are there that speak to the, the fact that the past is an illusion and all of our suffering comes from believing what the mind tells us happened even a minute ago, making the decision so inherent in this lesson is the fact that the power of decision which is another one of my favorite lessons. The power of decision is mine. This lesson teaches us that we get to make the decision to let the past go. When we yeah. let make the decision to make the past go, then we're not using our past fears to create and project into the future. Yeah, well, letting go is a choice. It's, it's an active choice we make in any given moment that if something comes into our brain, into our consciousness that is, is dragging us down, that's pulling us back, we get to choose again, right? You know, Course in Miracles is, it's always about choice. And I think that's, you know, one of the most important things we can see about the course is that it isn't to be followed blindly. The second we follow the course blindly, we are actually no longer free. It is the process of choosing in any given moment to follow the course, to choosing to follow the voice of the Holy Spirit, choosing to let go of the past. That is the core of A Course in Miracles, choosing to do the lesson or the, again, or again, another 10 times, you know, it, it's choosing for us to show up and play together. And I think that's something that it's easy to forget when we have painful past, when we have trauma, when we have anger, sadness, and that past is coming up and it's very real and it's in our body physiologically, not just mentally, and it feels so real, that's when we have to make the choice more than ever to either be here now in this moment and then allow this moment to teach us and move us forward, or we choose to stay in the past and pay, stay in the pain and stay in the suffering which um, can be difficult. It's human. It happens. It's not like we're suddenly perfect because we know how to choose and we're going to choose perfectly every time. Even A Course in Miracles tells us it's okay. You're not going to choose perfect every time, but you can choose again. 
you know, and I think that's really important for people to realize. Um, I have the reminders every day in my life. You know, I, it's not a mistake. I have a just let go coffee cup, right? <laughs> like this is for me. This is my teaching every day. I'm drinking from a coffee cup that that helps me live these teachings because I can be working, living my life, and something comes up, and I'm like, ah, and I'm like, I see the cup and go, just let go, choose again. And then I kind of ground myself. Um, so that's kind of what's coming up for me as you're talking about the past. Yeah. And... So it's fun because we just did within our uh, group 40 day that's going on right now, we just had a call with Lisa and Lisa just invited everyone on the call to sit back and consider. And it's interesting. This is usually when people use the word war or battle, I contract but I, I heard huh. her this time and she said let's all just consider that we are in a war and it's all um in the inner mind and there is what's real and what's true and then there is you know my christian background wants me to call it the adversary i really like that verb but the course calls it the ego um I know Muji or whatever, there's the personality, there's that, there's that aspect that's, that we think, or we've always believed up until this moment is us. So there is a personality that has labeled itself Cindy, who thrives on chaos, thrives on the, the belief that I am Cindy and you are Chris. Truth. And, you know, as course students, we can theoretically say, yeah, but how does that help me? <laughs> you know, yeah. um, truth states that Cindy and Chris don't exist. We're all one in the mind of Christ, right? And and there, and this anywhere where we're seeing um, an outer sign of war or trouble or grief, anywhere where we think anyone has the ability to hurt us, um, is, is part of the dream and the illusion. And what's so interesting and what, you know, I'm gonna hold the space that others are getting this experience that I've gotten in the last couple of days. I'm currently uh, in the process of looking at a relationship very clearly that has been special using course terminology, mm -hmm. you know, has had been special in my life. And I've asked that it be made holy and in that space, a whole bunch of the errors in my mind are coming up. Mm -hmm. And and um, what becomes so interesting is the guilt that floats to the surface, the yeah, buts, or this is how I've been hurt, or this is how I want to attack, or this is why I think, you know, all of that stuff is floating to the surface as if, you know, you've put a bomb in a place and all the debris <laughs> is flying to the surface, right? And so it all feels the mind keeps wanting to say that's real that's real that's real that's real but as a course student even though it doesn't feel real i can say no it's not <laughs> no it's not and i am willing to see it differently and i can you know in the midst of all of this which You've, you use the word pain and you use the word suffering in like one sentence or two sentences. And what I'm learning is, is that there can be pain without suffering. Yeah, so absolutely. There is, there is physical pain as a result of this transformation and, and correction of the errors in the mind. You're feeling, can feel like some intense physical, emotional sensations, but because I have made the decision that there's nothing more important than accepting the atonement. There's nothing more important than what we're doing here. There's no suffering. Yeah. And it becomes easier and easier and easier to look at the pain and wreck and give it to our holiness to purify. I do. I really want to piggyback on that because <laughs> it is, it's been, essential to my own transformation in my life is that, you know, having trauma in my past, having, you know, real painful situations. And one of the, the challenges we have when we walk down a spiritual path is it's easy to get stuck in the stories of the past and to believe that if we talk about them enough, 
we will suddenly become desensitized, that we will let go of the suffering if we just talk about the stories enough. And I want to bring something home, which is that the course offers us something profound when it comes to healing our past. And that is, it is 100% fine to talk about the past, to bring it up, to let it come up. When we are in the present moment fully, sensing our body, sensing our hands, sensing our feet, aware of our, our experience right now, what happens is that suffering and the pain from the past can be felt in the moment. We can feel that pain, but the present moment allows it to be released both from our, our psyche as well as our nervous system in a way that then we don't have to keep repeating the story because that's what causes the suffering. It's repeating the story over and over. It's like, you know, Albert Einstein, you know, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. We do that in our spiritual path. We tell the story over and over and over and over, hoping for a different result. Yet, if we just did it once, felt it fully, felt the pain fully in just that one moment, without having to do anything about it, without having to fix it, without even having to let it go, just in the present moment, the Holy Spirit will actually lift that. It actually allows us to release it. But the mistake we so often make, and I've done it many times and still do it sometimes, and I have to choose again, is I start to do that. I'm in the present moment. And then I go into my head and I'm telling the story again. And I'm not feeling the present moment and allowing the moment to heal me. And then I have to choose again to come back to the moment. And it, it is a practice. But I wanted to really hone in on, on that for a moment because it's easy to think that when we feel pain, it's going to be inevitable or that we have to keep repeating the story to desensitize ourselves to the pain. And the reality is that the present moment is what does the healing of that pain. We feel that heartbreak from a special relationship being damaged. We feel the loss of a loved one. It, it affects, you know, it, we're, you know, human beings living this spiritual, you know, spiritual beings living a human existence. You know, it's natural to have these experiences. It's what we choose to do with them, whether we choose to be present and give it to the Holy Spirit that allows us to decide if we're going to just feel the pain and then continue, or if we're going to feel the pain and the suffering that will keep repeating and repeating and repeating. And the suffering, the pain may not, may not be a choice. It may show up whether we want it to or not. The suffering absolutely is a choice. I'd like to take it one step further. Thank you. The pain is a gift. That is true as well, yes. And, and I say that, and I'm getting chills, so I know yeah. I always, the hair stands on this, <laughs> up on. The body is a great communication tool. The Course teaches yeah. us that. And one of the ways that my holiness tells me that the message um, is, is pure and coming from my holiness is all the hair on my body stands, like not my head but the hair on my arms stands, stands up. So if we were fully enlightened, we would know that we were one. Uh, and even if we remained in our physical body, we would not see any separation between us and anybody or anything else. That is, that can be a definition of a fully enlightened being. If we're anything other than that, then there are still errors in our mind that require correction. Mm -hmm. And what's even cooler than that is that th those errors don't have to exist in my mind. They could be in the one mind and you know, we all have a specific function God would have us fill. So the error doesn't have to be, isn't really mine. This is not personal. The error is the one mind and it, part of the reason I'm here is to help correct that error. So it doesn't, I don't have to take the error personally. If there's any part of me that doesn't, that still believes that there's something outside of me, that simply means that I have the opportunity to see it and offer it. I can't heal it. Grace heals it. All I have to do is look at it, 
breathe into it and be willing to see it differently. That's the only job, right? So what's cool is we get to a certain place and, and the hair is really standing up right now. <laughs> so take a moment, stop, breathe this in. We get to this place where when the pain shows up, even though it feels and the ego is working really hard to tell you this pain is special, this pain keeps you separate, this pain is real and your problem is bigger than everybody else's and your problem makes your life miserable and you'd really love to believe the Course in Miracles, but you can't right now because you have this health issue or this relationship issue or this financial issue. What, what Jesus is telling us right now, what the holiness is wanting us, giving us the opportunity to understand is that when we look at that pain and say, thank you, I don't know, you know, the course teaches us, I am never upset for the reason I think. And when we look at the pain and we can say, I'm never upset for the reason I think this pain is nothing other than identifying an error that can be corrected. Jesus, Holy Spirit, awareness, whatever it is, I don't even know what it is, but it is some aspect of this belief in separation and I'm willing to see it differently. And you, and you rest in God, lesson 109. I rest in God, I allow this healing to take place and you breathe into that. You more and more, I am seeing that the pain that is showing up in my life is a phenomenal gift because it allows me to do the work that I've come here to do. Does that make sense? Did that come through clearly? <laughs> It did. It, it did. Thank you for that. And, you know, I'm curious, you know, you talked about special relationships earlier and, and in your, your own experience that this is kind of coming up for you. I'm curious if there's any stories from your life that can help people who are, are watching us and listening, like how, how do they actually live this? You know, what's it look like when the errors are coming up in your mind and you're juggling with, you know, one hand and the other, one mind and the other, and you're trying to find that place of sanity. Um, what does that look like for someone who's just going through that process and trying to sort out, I guess, what we, what we could call fact from fiction? In okay. A way? So right now, the special relationship is with a man who I love, who's been in my life for quite a few years, who you could say that I've been dating. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and, um, I'm breathing and asking for the words. That's this, yeah. you know, I'm asking for the words from awareness. So um, the mind tells me, Cindy tells me that I've been wounded, you know, by actions that have taken place that are outside of my control. Like I didn't ask for this. I'm not being treated in a way that Cindy should be treated and it creates pain. And I literally, um, I can see the mind telling me that I need to defend myself. I can see the mind telling, and, and even I've watched more than once words come out that do not feel very holy within mm -hmm. all of it. And at the same time, I also am a witness to guilt. I can say, well, I understand why this is, you know, all of that stuff that has pretty much been happening my whole life, you know, and all relationships are special until they're made holy. Right. So, the mind, you know, Cindy, the personality is witnessing all of that. Like I could see it. I could see the attachment to wanting to make it real. Like it really feels real, you know, like uh, real things seem to be happening in the world. And I am fully committed to my awakening. Like every day I practice, you know, we're talking about it. It's a practice. It wasn't, and it's becoming easier and more, uh, you practice when it doesn't count so that when it does, it becomes the default and you remember sooner. So in the moments that I remember through all of this, I do uh, actively do what you and I do before we talk. I literally, and sometimes I will physically take a step back because it helps. I take a step back. I pause. I do a lot of self-talk. Now, Cindy, you're not here to have the perfect relationship with another human being. You're here to remember that there isn't another human being. You're not here to be treated with certain respect or to get flowers delivered or to um, 
be invited to, a, you know, now I'm making things up to this party or to have something to do on a Saturday night. That's not the purpose of your existence. I'm talking, I talk to myself all the time now, Chris. That's not why I'm here. I'm here to accept the atonement. I don't know exactly how to get from where the pain of what I'm feeling, it feels like a mind that won't stop, but I am never alone. You know, I have fully committed to the course teaching. So I know <laughs> that this isn't me and I'll yeah. talk and soothe. And so I'm going to step back and I'm going to rest. and I'm going to literally say, Holy spirit, I don't know how to fix this. And it feels real, but I know it's not. And so I trust you and I ask for your assistance and I'm going to rest in God and allow a new awareness. And I'll breathe into that. And then two minutes later or a minute later, or 30 seconds later, another thought pops up into my head and I look at it and I, and I literally say, Holy spirit, look at that. There's another attack. I, I, I you know, I'm making fun, but it does become humorous after a while. I'll sit there and go, Holy Spirit, look at that. There's another attack thought. Man, it feels real, but I know it's not because I know that the world I'm seeing isn't real and I don't want it anymore. I want the world that that exists in Christ's vision. And as long as I stay attached to this belief that I can be wounded in this world, I can never reach there. Furthermore, what I get to and what I'm getting to now, which is very cool, is when I step back and recognize that what's going on in this special relationship or my relationship with my mother or my sister and my daughter is nothing other than an opportunity to see the wounds. I'm able to, by doing this, I step back and all of a sudden I see the pattern. It's like, yeah. man, this feels exactly like, you know, the energy reminds me of what happened when I was 10 years old and, and I got rejected in the schoolyard and man, you know, and then the realization occurs that, that we are taught in the course that we hold, it's our, only our thoughts create our world. So there was a thought in my mind when I was 10 years old or two year old or whatever, that I am rejectable, that I am not lovable, that I am bad, that my actions or my looks or whatever will keep me from having the perfect life. That was a thought. I yeah. projected the thought out into the world and I created a story, a play that showed me that thought. Yeah. But as, as someone who believes that I am a being, I then look at that story and say, wow, I am unlovable. My life sucks. I'm too fat. I'm too this. I'm too that. I can't get the love I want. That thought then goes back into me, becomes a stronger thought into a belief. I take the belief I project it out into the world and I'm 20 years old and my boyfriend cheats on me. I look at it and say, I must not have been good enough. See? Yeah. And it, and it cycles. Uh, the course gives us an opportunity for the disconnect. So I, I go into this course and I study and I, and I have my quiet time. I hand my life over to God and all of a sudden I see, you know, this special relationship is the greatest gift in the world because now I'm a course student. Now I know that God loves me. Now I know I am as God created me. And it's only my beliefs that are creating what I see. And I can say, Holy Spirit, I've been in this loop since before I can remember. I don't want to play this game anymore. The power of decision is mine. I am willing to hang out in the discom discomfort until a new perception comes to me. And it that can take, powerful. yeah. So it, that experience, which is very cool, and which a lot of people don't get, can take a breath, or it can take a minute, or it can take an hour, or it could take a week, or it can take a month, or it could take two years. It takes as long as it takes. You know, that's really, um, 
you know, we have expectations about if we do A Course in Miracles for one year, 365 lessons, we'll be enlightened. If we go to a, a workshop for a week, we will get whatever that teaching is and we'll get our healing and our growth. But what you just said is so important, which is it, it basically takes as long as it takes. You know, the ego, our minds want to attach to a, a, a certain timeline and say, this is how long it takes and I'll be done then. But the reality is what is in the way, you know, what, what is in the way is the way, you know, that is exactly what we're talking about here. And if what is in the way takes us a moment to breathe into and release, that's great. If we have to keep choosing again, like you said, for a year or several years or several moments, then, then that's what it takes. Um, but as a course student, what's so beautiful is that we're on the journey. We get to do whatever is being called of us by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will let us know, you know, how long it's going to take um, on a need to know basis. We'll know when it's, you know, when we've learned the lesson and it's let go. And um, I know there's often, you talked about this, that it's humorous, that there is a lightheartedness in spirit that is difficult to see when we're going through an experience, when we're, we're on the journey. And yet the, the experience of enlightenment, it has the word light in it. There's a lightening, a lifting, and an opening of our spirit that we can laugh. We can find joy and delight, um, often in both the release of something, of finally no longer holding on to that past that, you know, the shoulder, you know, what's on our shoulder, hunting us down from, from the years past. Um, but also there's a lightning that happens when we realize things like the pattern. And we realize I've been doing this thing over and over and over and I don't have to, <laughs> like I've been going through all this pain for like decades and I can choose differently. I can choose again. I think it's, um, that's been so important. And I, I really hope that um, along this journey, there is uh, finding those moments of humor and of lightness and of playfulness. You know, when you and I talk about coming on here and, and connecting, it's never what we need to teach. There's not a serious bone in our body. Like we literally use the word, we're going to go play together. Let's have fun. Let's see what happens. And I think it was probably seven or eight years ago on my spiritual journey, I had this epiphany. We always call it spiritual work. You know, that's what we've been trained into. You know, you dig, you shovel, you get the junk out, you find out what's in that hole, you let it go, and then you bury it up and you go to the next hole and you dig again and you, and you do all this work. And I was like, I don't, that doesn't inspire me. Like, that doesn't feel true to me. That doesn't represent how I show up on the spiritual journey. Like, it could be play. So even in like my Gmail inbox, I used to have a folder that said work and I changed it to love, right? Because me, love and play, work and love, work and play, they're all interchangeable, but I can choose a word that's more uplifting, more playful, more humorous, more enlightening. Um, and I just wanted to offer that gift that, you know, even in our choice, even in the pain that comes up, there comes a moment where we can actually feel the lightness. And from that lightness, in my case, many times, and clearly in yours also comes, you know, laughter. Yeah, I can lose it sometimes in laughter and it's so much fun. <laughs> you know, we talked about it last week and hopefully this doesn't make the internet go out because it did a lot last week. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm, I'm more able to live now because we did that teaching. I'm more live, able to live with the truth that God's will for us is perfect happiness, right? So, yeah. and it's an intrinsic happiness. And that's really what's been coming up this week for me is understanding that we're talking about a joy, a peace, a space that is independent of anything that's going on in the world. So it yeah. doesn't stick. Yep. So we look at this world as an opportunity and, and we could use the word work if we want or play, but whatever's going on in the world and there's an infinite number of dramas and stories and all sorts of things. We, you know, our job play is really just 
as all of these stories, thoughts, belief stories flow through us, most of it just flows right through us and we don't even yeah. notice. So we get to just smile and know it's not real. We get to, but we, what we get to do is offer love to whatever sticks, you yeah. know? So if somebody comes, sends me an email or looks at me and says, you know, Cindy, your teaching yesterday just really sucked. And I wish you'd get, <laughs> you know, I wish, you know, you died because you're just really bad at it and you're not helping. If I, if, if I had a belief in my space that I was bad and that I was unworthy of playing with you, then that would create pain in me. And yeah. I could either, and for a minute, I might buy the ego, the spiritual eagles belief that, you know, Cindy, you should go get quiet and sit on a mountain for a year because no one wants to listen to you. Or I could look and say, Holy Spirit, look at that. <laughs> I yeah. believe that, you know, and I offer it up for purification. But if someone came up to me and said, Cindy, you know, I really hate your green hair. I just look at them. I don't have green hair. I, I don't yeah. own that statement at all. And and that attack, that so-called attack flows right through me. Uh, you know, as you're saying that, it totally reminds me of a conversation I had with my son uh, literally a week ago. So at the school he's at, their, their work every year is bound into an actual book. And, you know, it's a lot of artwork. Um, even when they're writing a, a book report, it's in cursive writing and they create a beautiful frame with coloring. Um, it's just wonderful. And they bind a book every year. And my son was going through his, um, he's currently now in seventh grade um, at the time that we we're sharing this. And he was looking at his fourth grade book and he opened up the book and he literally laughed at what he had done because he realized it just wasn't representative of him, of his truth, of what he's creating now, of the way he lives in the world. And I think that laughter, it wasn't a mean-spirited laughter. It wasn't a teasing like, oh, you're so terrible. Look how bad you were four years ago. It wasn't that at all. It was a real innocent, playful laugh. Like, I can't believe that's what I was creating. And we could still honor, you know, I'd say, well, that was your best at that time. And that's totally fine. And then he moves forward to his seventh grade work and he goes, that's really good. Like he really honors what it is that he's creating now in a way that feels more true. But that ability to laugh at anything which doesn't represent how we show up how we live, the truth of the moment, of our connection with spirit, of our connection with the present moment, I think is a, a really tremendous gift. And he really helped me see that in a very practical way that it's not personal, right? He's not making fun of his former self. It's a laughter that is light, that actually honors the journey we've taken and honors that and allows it to be let go in a way that we can be here now and just have fun and enjoy what is uh, here and what is going to come before. So, you know, it was interesting to see, um, see the way that that can show up in our journeys, whether it is a journey in his case of, of schooling and art, whether it's our journey of the spiritual journey, you know, we're all in the river together and some of us are in boats further down the river. Some of us are back in the river, but we're all in the same river. And if we can have some lightheartedness about it, it makes it so much easier to heal, to let go of the pain. And, you know, one of the things I love about laughter is physiologically, you, you can only laugh in the present moment. And we can only laugh because it is real here right now. So anytime we have laughter, we know we are enlightened, at least for this moment. Um, so yes, any opportunity that brings us to genuine laughter is a real true gift, even if we're laughing at our former self. I want to, uh, I'm very inspired and it keeps coming up in yeah. my space. So I'm going to share something that may really press some ego's buttons. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do it quickly and gently. Okay. Um, but I want to invite anyone who may be triggered by this to be willing to see things differently. Okay. 
um, because we really, even though I said this could take a, a minute or a week or a year or 10 years, it doesn't have to take any more than a breath. Okay. And that's what I'm saying. I have a friend who I've been working with and, and the last 20 years especially has been very traumatic. He lost a child from an epileptic seizure when she was 21, I think. He's had um, some really significant health challenges. He was just in a horrible car crash. You know, literally uh, his, his wife left him, you know? So almost everywhere you look, he has plenty of excuses to feel sorry for himself and yeah. to feel like a victim and to, to hold on to that. Yeah, right? his whole world crumbled. His whole, right? And, and I'm holding this space and I'm watching how attached he is, he is to, he's not a course student, okay? And, and so I could look at him and, and we've had a number of conversations and I can say, are you willing to be healed? And he could say yes. And are you willing to be happy? And he can say yes. And we can breathe into that. And with the next breath, he will say to me, my therapist says, I've been through hell and back. This is going to take a really long time to heal. And that's his belief. And, and, and it is not up to me to change his belief other than I continue hold his breath. And in our Christian environment where he and I, you know, move, I could just say to him over and over again, and this is true, if you go to the New Testament, it never took Jesus any time to heal. You know, right. a third of his ministry was healing. And he would say things, you know, to somebody who's been sick and hanging out by the healing waters for, you know, 30 years, he'll say to them, pick up your mat and walk. And they pick up their mat and walk. Healing can be that quick. Um, and, and yet for many of us, we use our stories, which we've just said, come from our beliefs. It's a crazy thing, right? So all of these stories, th there's no guilt. There's no, it's my fault because it's the collective. I also, Jesus is also teaching us that these beliefs that we've been holding on to, they may not be ours, but they're ours to help clear. And we see them by the stories that are in our life. But as long as we believe we are the stories, we can hold on to the belief that it protects us to hold on to this idea that our circumstances make us special, that, that our pain keeps us protected, and that, and that it's okay to sit and receive help from therapists and priests and counselors, and that somehow we have this addiction of telling these stories over and over and over again. And, and it's unimaginable to believe that the more we tell the stories, the more we sit in the energy of saying, it's, you know, feel sorry for me, or um, I've been a victim, here's why, that just by continuing to tell those stories and, and sitting in the space of being comfortable with the idea that it's going to take, that I've been through hell and back and it's going to take forever to heal actually creates a uh, space for more trauma to occur in our life to keep that going absolutely so, so we have the freedom to do that and 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 i love everyone regardless i just it felt really important well important is not the right word but i was really <laughs> inspired to invite anyone who's living that story to be willing to let it all go now well you know it, uh, one of the most important things and i think this circles into kind of the, the lesson and everything is that at some point we have to choose to stop telling the story because the more we tell it, the more we just anchor that belief in our experience and the more it re-traumatizes us. You know, if we go back to what I said earlier, you know, it's fine to tell the story, but tell it in the present moment, feel it fully because that present moment is what allows the healing it's if we just keep repeating it no wonder it's going to take your friend years to heal because he's in an environment that is reinforcing telling the story over and over and over and that's one of the challenges i think 
um, that can sometimes happen with uh, traditional talk therapy. And I've had uh, traditional talk therapists who have been fantastic and helped me with some real core issues. So the point is not that it's bad or good, but it's the way we show up and use it and be with it. And if we can show up with true presence, then we have an opportunity to let that go. So if I were to offer a piece of advice to anyone listening, it would be if you find yourself telling a story over and over and it's in your head how you were wrong, you know, it's more of a heady type of story. It's over your shoulder, you know, it's the past that keeps coming up. Try stopping. Just choose to stop and take a deep breath and just ask the Holy Spirit, what next? And if what next is to tell that story, that's fine. Be present with it. It's quite possible what next may be totally different. You know, and, and you know, we're kind of coming to the end of our time here, Cindy, but this really ties into the, the end of the lesson. You know, uh, the, you know, throughout the day, increase the freedom sent through your ideas to all the world and say, whenever you are tempted, to deny the power of your simple change of mind. I loose the world from all I thought it was and choose my own reality instead. You can choose the present moment. Um, I'd like to suggest before we say goodbye, that's what we yeah. do all day, but let's, uh, let me just read this last paragraph and then yeah. move into the 15 minute practice. Hmm but I'm suggesting doing something a little odd in a conversation, which is I'm going to read this, then I'm going to say the prayer and we're going to move into maybe just two or three minutes of silence. And then mm -hmm. we'll come back and say goodbye. Does that? Yeah. And Thank I, you for also, leaving us. I also want to invite everyone who's listening to take just a couple of seconds now and without excuse, without trying to be spiritual or perfect, allow your bitches, you know, your complaints, your victimhood, that your stories of illness or relationship or financial woes or whatever's going on, allow them to show up. Right now, we're all one, we're all joined. You are in a safe space, mm. you know? If you're feeling unsafe, don't do it, you know? Yeah. But allow, you know, it's okay to, you know, whatever we're doing, we're offering it now to the part of us that knows God. Um, so here we go. Today, our purpose is to free the world from all the idle thoughts we ever held about it and about all living things we see upon it. They cannot be there. They cannot be there no more than we. For we are in the home our Father set for us along with them. And we who are as he created us would lose the world this day from every one of our illusions that we may be free. Begin the two-minute period in which we practice now with this. I who remain as God created me, would lose the world from all I thought it was. For I am real because the world is not, and I would know my own reality. So now just rest, alert but with no strain, and let your mind in quietness be changed so that the world is freed along with you.
You need not realize that healing comes to many brothers far across the world, as well as to the ones you see nearby as you send out these thoughts to bless the world. But you will sense your own release, although you may not fully understand as yet that you could never be released alone. Thank you, Cindy, for uh, all of our adventure today, for um, bringing that home in a way that helped me ground a little more present as I go out into the day and I could hear kind of thoughts coming in and then not dropping and letting it go during our, our practice period. Um, so it has been a wonderful adventure and I'm looking forward to our next one. And um, for everyone who's joined us today, I just want to say thank you for joining us on this adventure. I know it can be um, a challenge to invest a, an hour out of our day to just deepen into the teaching, deepen into ourselves. And yet I hope that uh, the time you know, for you has been as much of a gift as it has for Cindy and I, because I know I've come to treasure these times and the deepening as well. Uh, if you do want to go deeper, of course, click the link and go join the 40 day journey with, you know, teachers of God and Lisa Natoli. If you like the cup, you know, uh, <laughs> this was made for me, but I'm happy to share it with, um, with you. Um, and in the meantime, you know, I just, uh, I wish you well. <laughs>